it's November by now and it's getting pretty cold outside and I decided to install a fireplace and um, the installation of a fireplace uh, can be in many different ways and I opted for a enclosed fireplace uh, a cassette which I will mount in the wall now to do so you will have to have an opening in the wall and you have to have a proper chimney it doesn't fit everywhere um, you could also go for an open fireplace like this one but that is not very efficient and you have to have the opening for it in the wall you have to have the chimney in, you know and it creates a lot of dust and smoke as well so I decided not to go for this type of a fireplace so just come along so I can show it to you the eye fire um, is actually an eye green fireplace uh, which is burning wood very efficiently and very environmental friendly uh, it is a module based of cast iron uh, and um, it has a swinging door as you can see you can also have them with uh, lift doors but uh, we went for a swinging door and uh, basically all you need is a air intake and an exhaust that goes in the chimney all right so we decided to go for the i green swinging door a fireplace of 105 centimeters by 55 centimeters tall uh, the fireplace itself uh, has an efficiency of 76%, which is not bad for a wood stove. And then basically it is producing about 11 kilowatts, which is quite good. Now it all depends uh, how you want to use it and for what you want to use it. Uh, if you want to use it as your prime heating source, then you have to make sure that the fireplace is dimensioned properly uh, according to the dimensions of the room you want to heat. But if it's just a decoration thing and just you know a sphere uh, creating fireplace then you can go for a smaller one I decided to go for a fairly big one because I want to heat up the room with it as well so this is the wall where I will mount the fireplace into uh, some time ago I installed this uh, gyprox wall and I covered up an old fireplace uh, it's quite deep as you can see and I already pre cut a hole in my gyprox so have a look right so how deep that is uh, this is about 60 centimeters and it's about 1 meter 50 and 1 meter 50 high. So I have plenty of space uh, to put the um, fireplace cassette into the wall because I want to have it recessed uh, basically into the wall. I don't want it to have sticking out, I don't want to have it flush, I want it to have it a little bit backwards. Um, and that's deep enough. Uh, if you decide to install your own fireplace then make sure that you have the proper openings before you buy the fireplace uh, okay so the next thing I'm gonna do now is cut up cut uh, the chip rocks open onto the full size and then I will build a pedestal because a fireplace like the one I'm talking about is about 120 kilograms so I want to have a firm solid surface to stick it on I will build that with Eton blocks but you can use any kind of blocks for that purpose and then on the top of it I will actually uh, install a steel plate with a hole in it where the tube will go through and actually end up in the chimney which is above it. <laughs> Alright, so that's the first part done. So now um, we'll remove it, eh? And there you have it, the old fireplace. I will have to remove the wood, uh, but that's an easy one to do. So now we remove the gyprox. rocks. Uh, the next thing to do is to cut off the wood, the supports. And they're quite all right because I have supports on the side as well. So that doesn't really matter much. Um, and then basically uh, we can start filling in uh, the bottom part with Eton box uh, to provide a solid base for the fireplace. So this starts to look this starts to look a bit better uh, I will now reinforce uh, the top 
and the bottom with the remain the pieces of wood that I just took out uh, and that's it. Now I need to reinforce the uh, wood uh, that was removed so uh, I will do this first of all. That's done. So now I can start uh, filling up the bottom part with the uh, Eton blocks and I will glue them all together so we have a firm and solid base uh, for the fireplace. So now we start filling up this hole with um, Eton blocks a uh, little bit by little bit but I need to cut them first and then once we've come to this level uh, we then do the sides. There we go. Now, this is a special saw blade uh, for Eton, so you can see it on the teeth, they are enforced. So don't do it with a normal wood saw because it won't last very long. And by the way, I glue them always uh, with this easy fix stuff. That works quite easy. So I will keep up building up the Eton blocks until I reach this level and then uh, we have another look. So far so good, uh, we filled up the bottom part uh, with Eton blocks uh, and now we're doing the sides. Not that it's necessary but uh, it's easier to finish it off uh, and then once that is done uh, we are kind of uh, finished with it and the uh, opening is ready uh, to receive the uh, new fireplace. And we also now need to do the other side uh, and then we just continue uh, building it up. Okay, so we are done with part one. Uh, we completed the housing for the um, fireplace. Uh, it's completely filled up with uh, Etang uh, all the way to the top. Uh, I still have to cut off uh, some of that foam, but that's a minor thing. I'll let it dry first. And then in part two, we'll be mounting the actual fireplace inside the housing here and connect it to the chimney, which is right here uh, with a tube. Um, and then uh, basically uh, we'll finish it off with some chip rocks around it and it will be ready uh, for the winter time. So thank you for viewing and Keep an eye on part two of installing an iFire uh, fireplace.